Todd Howard is here for this week's conversation on the Cool Grandpa Podcast. Now, Todd is passionate about addressing one of the key issues that most men have in their lives, and that is as we get older, we tend to lose relationships, whether we change jobs and we had some great work buddies, or we just move away or friends move away, whatever it is, it seems to be as we get older, we start families, as we take on more responsibilities, whether it's at work or in the community, that sometimes our close circle of friends changes and even dwindles. Now, Todd's got a great program set up that we're going to talk about called Fire Pit Men's Group. Now, this is going to be a great opportunity to do something really easy to help rebuild those connections, especially amongst your neighbors. So you will enjoy this conversation. And once you've listened to it, please remember to share it with three friends. I also wanted to remind you too about More Than Grand has a fantastic holiday resource. Now this resource is a guide that you can use with your adult children as well as any other grandparents that are in the mix. What's a great part of this program is that it really lays out some of the conversations that you want to have ahead of time before everybody arrives on scene for the holidays. That way you avoid a lot of the anxiety, you avoid a lot of the miscommunication, and it's a great, great resource. So be sure to check out the link in my show notes for more than grand and order your copy of the holiday guide today. The last thing I want to remind you of is my children's book, My Grandpa's Grandpa is on sale now for 20% off through the end of the year. So if you haven't gotten a copy, now's a good time to get one and take advantage of a little bit of discount. So that's enough talking from me. Let's jump into our conversation. Hello and welcome to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. This is your host, Greg Payne, coming at you from Studio 12. This podcast is about being the best possible grandpa you can be, focusing on what it is to be a grandpa and how we can all share that experience together for our grandchildren. Hi, Todd. Welcome to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. Hey, Greg. It's good to be here. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to sit down and talk with us about such an important topic, which is really connecting men and and getting groups that we can use to support each other. Yeah, I'm I'm interested in the conversation, uh, even more interested, and hopefully uh, this idea taking off so guys find those connections. Absolutely. Before we get too far deep into uh, the Fire Pit Men's Group, I'd love for you to Introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us a little bit about yourself. And then what prompted you to start this Fire Pit Men's Group? As far as wanting to start this, I got to go back about 20 years for that. My initial goal, uh, I had a a job with a software company. I was newly married, was starting a family. Um, In a lot of ways, my life was not necessarily going the direction that I wanted it to go. And uh, that led me to connect with some guys and build friendships really for a couple of reasons. One is I I wanted to be able to just build some friendships and have some connections outside my family, outside of the responsibilities of uh, raising kids, having a job, those kind of things. And also I, I felt like if I had those friendships and I had opportunities to regularly meet with them, I'd have something to look forward to. And, you know, looking back on that and and saying that now, that almost feels kind of sad, but that's the truth. That's kind of where I was. I was, I was quickly going into a life of autopilot where I'm just sort of churning away. And I thought, man, is this really it for the rest of my life? Is this what it's going to be like? And I was reaching out, you know, building friendships with guys, really trying to find just some opportunities to, to connect with some guys, have real conversations that I felt like were going somewhere. What I discovered is that as I would meet guys in my neighborhood, I'm literally talking about like after mowing lawns, drinking beers in the cul-de-sac kind of conversations. The more that I would veer away from talking about sports or, you know, sort of networking and really ask questions about them and get to know them, they really opened up really quickly. And they were almost surprised, like, man, this is, this is cool. I'm developing a friendship here. And, uh, 
that went on for a while. And after building a few of these friendships with guys on the street, I said, what if I built a fire pit in my backyard and we just met out there once a week and we were just more deliberate about these conversations? So instead of, you know, running into each other sort of haphazardly after mowing the lawns and, and striking up conversations, we just knew there was a time and we would meet there. I'll bring the topic of discussion and uh, we'll just we'll hang out and talk. And they all said yes. They all loved it. And that first group, which we called Fire Pit, um, because that's where we met, uh, lasted for seven years. And that was really going through that process with these guys and all the conversations we had made me realize that where I thought I was needing to find some connection in my life as a man outside of work and family that made me feel like I had something um, that was really mine and I was interested in, there were lots of other guys that felt the same way. And they were eager to sort of disconnect from their lives and get around the fire pit and uh, really connect with other men. Oh, wow. That's great. And it reminds me so much, too, of how at times we can lose ourselves in our families. And that's not to put families down and saying, don't get married, you know, none of that. But I think it's normal as young men, uh, as we get married and we start those families, that it can become a little bit consuming where we do miss those old buddies that we had in, in those relationships in like our late teenage years, early 20s, where we go off and do stuff. And we could talk about a bunch of different things on a road trip. Or, or something along those lines. And then we get these families and it's all good stuff, but then we do lose some of these connections. And being able to rebuild some of those things, I think is really important for us and something that we don't often talk about when it comes to uh, guys taking care of ourselves from a mental health and emotional standpoint. Yeah, that's exactly right. It There's some kind of a evil version of autopilot that kicks in for a lot of guys after their career gets rolling and it just feels like I'm climbing, I'm climbing a ladder. I'm keeping up. There's, there's kind of a pressure just to push through the day and you can go for a long time and really not develop new good connections that kind of, you know, it sounds corny, but make you feel alive. Friendships are a way to make yourself feel alive and it's easy to, to let those go. And I also think too is and i encourage like my wife and sisters and everybody else hey you need to go spend time with your girlfriends and go spend time doing whatever that is and the same holds true for guys you know i'm telling my uh, adult sons like you got to find a group of guys to go pal around with still you've got to find and it may be you know not as much time as you used to because they've got young families but it's hey you need to be spending some of this time around the guys. And I think you and I had talked previously about how I think I even miss the old softball team, how throwing the ball in warmups for about 10 minutes or so to get our old creaky shoulders loosened up for the game. We talk about, you know, how the job's going, how the family's going, uh, what's going on. Are you looking for a job? Stuff like that, that you don't necessarily sit down and, and talk about like right in front of somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. It, um, uh, creating those times, you know, whether it's, you know, throwing a softball or doing something. Uh, and I think that's, that's one of the, the reasons that fire pit was successful is, you know, you, you tell guys, Hey, grab a couple beers, come over to my backyard, sit around a fire pit. There's kind of something that every guy gets to do holding their hands, you know, deal with somebody's chopping wood before, um, it's not so awkward as, you know, two guys sitting on a sofa next to each other, you know, looking at each other awkwardly. There, there's something going on and guys can kind of relax and, and get into that groove and in parallel have some really good conversations. We hit on this a little bit, but who is Fireman's Group? Who Who's this really geared towards? Yeah, Fire Pit is really designed for guys who are looking for a way to connect. And... I think also for guys who want to prioritize friendship. If you ask guys if they want to connect, they'll say yes. That's an obvious answer. We all know the benefits of connection. Um, we're starting to see the statistics come out about how men are losing connection. 
And so every guy in his right mind is going to say, yes, I want to be connected. But it's very difficult to take action to find connection. And so when you say, I want to, I want to do something, I want to prioritize friendship in my weekly life or biweekly, um, Fire Pit is a chance to start a men's group in your neighborhood with guys that live in your neighborhood that can walk to your backyard and they will prioritize coming because they want to prioritize friendship. Um, it's interesting. I, I have, there are several fire pit groups out there and these are guys that have, uh, very high levels of, of success, very busy jobs. And you would think they would say, I don't, I don't have, I don't have time for that. The opposite is actually true. They are saying, no, I, I want to prioritize friendship. I just didn't know how. I don't know exactly what that means. But now that fire pit means walking down the street to Todd's house and meeting him in his backyard, I, I'm going to make time for that. I'm going to do that. And there are guys that move their professional schedules around to make sure they're at fire pit because they want to prioritize building friendships and having those connections. Fire pit, the way you described it, is definitely a type of men's group that's, I think, based more on on building friendships. And I know there's some other different types of men's group, and friendships are around those, but could you talk about maybe some of the other uh, men's groups that you talk about, I think, on your blog and, and on the website? Yeah, there, there's actually lots of different men's groups. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consolidate them, though, into three groups. The first type of men's group is generally a therapy-based men's group. And these are designed to help men through some kind of crisis or fix some problem that men have. It's often run by a professional who knows what they're doing, some kind of therapist. It is sometimes not, and those are really dangerous. And I don't like the idea of therapy where there's a lay leader sort of walking guys through some some crisis or problem. So that's categorically one type of men's group. Um, those typically, you know, last for as long as the guy thinks he's being helped, or if they feel like, okay, fix my problem, I'm out of here. So they're they're somewhat temporary. The second category of men's groups are men's groups that are basically teaching some doctrine, and they're mostly religious not all religious, but the idea is we want to turn you into better men, better fathers, better husbands, better leaders, a better something. There's a version of you that could be better. And so the discussions really are oriented around how, how can you improve yourself? In my opinion, those are exhausting because to walk into a, a conversation where the premise is you're not doing something right, we need to fix you. I'm, just, I'm out of there <laughs> as quickly as I can get out of there. Some guys, you know, they'll go, but those typically don't last very long either. They, they revolve around a book study and, you know, guys kind of bail out of those. The third type of group, and there are too few of these, and this is where I put fire pit categorically, um, is a group where it's really about connecting. It's really about building friendship. No one's fixing anybody. No one's coming in to be fixed. These are long-term relationships. And uh, there could be groups of a bunch of guys that get together and surf. Um, could be sports-based. I have guys sit around a backyard fire pit. But the goal literally is to have new connections with guys in your life. And what's great about that is they can last forever. They can morph based on the needs of the group at the time. If somebody needs to talk about, I want to shut down my business and, and start my own, uh, or uh, get out of my career, and start a new business. The group will morph around helping that guy think through that. And then later on, somebody has a problem with their teenage kid, the group will morph the conversation to help that guy. And uh, so, so there is some help going on, but it's not in that therapeutic or dogmatic um, prescriptive style that the other group categories have. Right. Well, and I think too, I like the idea of these groups being able to kind of morph around whatever the topic is and whatever the individual might be going through. Because to your point earlier, that is a bunch of guys that are gathered up in the cul-de-sac when they're blowing the grass after the cutting. And, and you know, it's like, hey, what's going on? 
you know, I'm seeing your car home all the time. Yep. Well, yeah, I, I just started working from home. Here's, you know, I started a new business, whatever it might be. Um, but then being able to have that, that one gathering place with a fixed time, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I think just adds a, that little bit of formality, I think goes a long ways to making sure that it's a priority. So you're not just catching somebody out in the front yard or what are some of the challenges? Because, you know, as a young grandpa myself, I know that there's, as we're starting to get into these late forties, fifties, there's a number of different challenges that, that men start to go through. And we've certainly talked a little bit about the isolation, the, the loss of friends, but what are some of the other things that men are facing as we're heading into our midlife, that fire pit might be uniquely positioned to help us out with. Part of it is, you know, there's the obvious ones that you just mentioned. Um, uh, all the all the family changes, health changes. As you get further in your career, um, you you've really got a network of professional counterparts, but not friendships. And so that's one of the big issues is that, um, you know, you you kind of look around one day and realize I don't actually have any friends. I don't have people to talk to. Um, I just have coworkers and there's, there's a whole uh, thing there that I think people are pretty familiar with the idea of the dangers around that. But some of the challenges that are talked about less often, but I see quite often, um, disillusionment is really an issue I'm seeing a lot right now. Disillusionment with, um, or, or guys rethinking their, um, religious beliefs that they received as a kid. And even that they tried to pass on to their kids. That's a big one. I see a lot of right now. Um, disillusionment with, uh, the country, the political system, things that they just kind of, you know, go, man, this is just, it's such a mess. It's not getting better. I'm getting frustrated. Things are getting worse. A lot of the, th- a, l- a lot of the beliefs that I used to hold on to, they didn't work for me. And now that I no longer have to sort of claim that these things are true for the sake of my children, I get to admit, I actually don't think they are true. And I'm questioning a lot of, um, uh, you know, what is, what is true and what is meaningful and what do I really have in my life and what have I produced over the, over the course of my life? There's a lot of guys in their fifties and sixties that are having those conversations Now, not necessarily out in the open with people they don't know well, but when you really sit down, and especially if you spend a couple of years getting to know somebody, you pretty quickly find out that when they act like, you know, they're in control and kind of know that everything is going to be okay, that really is an act. And when they have, when they feel free to say, yeah, here's the long list of stuff that I think is really full of crap (laughs) and I don't, I don't buy it anymore. A bunch of other guys start start nodding and saying, "Yeah," and uh, and those make for really interesting conversations. I think sometimes too, it's great to hear other people go, "Yeah, that's something I'm concerned about," or "That's something that keeps me up at night as well." Because I know sometimes even just myself, right? I can get wrapped up in my own head about, "Am I the only one thinking this? Am I the only one experiencing this? Everybody else seems to have their stuff together, and I'm the one that's falling apart." But then when you have the fire pit group that's been going on long enough where everybody feels comfortable, it sounds like you have more people going, "Yeah, that's right. That you know, I'm keeping, you know, I'm staying up at night worrying about this, or I'm questioning these things." And yeah. I think that's that's valuable just to, like I said, to pull us out of our own heads because I think we oftentimes end up there and it's not a great place to be a lot of the times. Yeah, it it's very helpful. You know, it it's hard in some ways to go through these periods of dis- disillusionment, but when you get a chance to talk with other guys and find out that they feel the same way, then you feel like, and, and I'm, trying, I'm trying to say this without sounding corny, you feel like, well, we have each other. We have this friendship. We have us. I'm less um, confident that America is the country that I thought it was. I'm less confident in our political system, our legal system, our, you know, you name it. I think everything is kind of 
if not falling apart, corrupt or a real mess. However, once a week or every other week, I get to meet with you guys. And I know that if I had a problem, I know who to call. So in a weird way, even though we're talking about all the things that we feel like are kind of blowing up around us, I feel like I have a group of guys that are in my corner. And that offsets a lot of the concern and fear I have about, you know, the world at large. And, uh, and, and that's kind of an interesting transition to watch people sort of go from leaning on their beliefs and systems and principles to leaning on a group of guys and saying, this is real. I know this is real. I know you guys would be here for me. And uh, that's actually a nice, a nice thing to see happen. Oh, I'm sure. You know, one of the big things, too, that I feel like is that the more you get to know the neighbors and, you know, the, the guys in the neighborhood know each other, it becomes even more of that idea of people can watch out for the families and people can watch out. And you were talking about that, but it, even from like just a physical sense, hey, if we have a tornado, you know, you and I live in North Georgia, and, you know, occasionally tornadoes come through and big limbs come down and knowing that there's a group of people that'll come over with some chainsaws or help move a limb out of the driveway or whatever, and you don't have to do it yourself, I think also adds a level of security to just the day-to-day life. Yeah, that's exactly right. We, we live in our communities. We live aware of what's going on in the world, but we live in our immediate community. And I think that's a very important thing that guys can understand. And, and these aren't things that I teach in Fire Pit. These are realizations guys come to. When you plug into the news and you see everything going on and you're sort of being force fed by the media, and I'm not going to go down that tangent of, you know, trying to criticize all that, but you walk away with a certain perspective. When you walk out your front door and you smell a fire going on down the street, you know you're going to go meet your guys and there's a fun text string, text string with chatter throughout the week and you're plugged into that, you feel very different. You you can you can have a sense of calm in you. And uh it sounds like a small thing, but it's not. When you have a community right around you of guys that are looking out for you and know what's know, know what's going on in your life and you're there for each other, it doesn't really matter what's going on in the world at large. Your world gets much smaller. And I think that's a very that's a healthier way to live. Absolutely, it is because we've also heard not just men losing connections as we get older, but also neighbors and neighborhoods losing connections because as everybody's working on a lot of people working online, you hardly ever see your neighbors. You hardly ever go over and talk and hang out. And there's certainly exceptions to that, but I think it's a lot of people are saying on the rise, like, I don't know the people that live behind me. I don't know the people that live you know, two doors down from me. might wave to them, but I don't really know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's dangerous. Fire pit is a great way to pull those guys off the couch and give them an opportunity to, to build some connections. How do the discussion guides that you offer help people get the fire pit going and help this, this start to evolve? Because on one hand, it seems really simple. Hey, make a fire, have a cooler. Guys will come over and hang out. But as you start to want to move the direction of the group maybe a little bit deeper, how do some of the uh, discussion prompts and guides that you have help move that along? Yeah, the, the discussion guides are built in a very deliberate manner. Um, it starts off by getting guys to talk about things that are relatively easy to talk about, um, their, their experience or belief with political correctness would be a, an easy example. These are the kind of conversations that guys can have a bit at a bit of arm's length, meaning they can put some skin in the game. They can talk about what they think, but they're not necessarily talking about them yet. And so that's kind of the first you know phase of conversations. And then the discussions start to turn a little bit more towards them. And uh, over time, maybe over, you know, six or eight months, we get to the point where I actually have each guy take a night and he tells his story. 
And it's not awkward anymore because we've already had several months worth of conversations. And uh, it's probably over the course of a year that guys go from talking about these, you know, sort of arm's length topics to really talking about their own lives and what's going on. And it's not all heavy and droopy. Um, you know, there's a lot of great things going on in guys' lives, but it takes about that long for guys to really feel comfortable. Um, everyone has an opportunity to slowly put skin in the game. There are three rules that really help drive the conversations. The first one is you have to talk. You can't sit back and just listen. You got to put some skin in the game. The second is you don't teach. You never, ever think to yourself, okay, you're doing something wrong. I need to teach you how to do this right. Because that turns it from a, a from a discussion into a debate and, and debating kills connection. So that idea of don't teach, listen and ask questions. That's how we, that's how we make the conversation go. And then the third one exists in every men's group. You don't talk about what happens outside a fire pit. But I find that those three rules plus the slow on ramp of discussion guides over the course of a year can take any group of guys and build some real friendships. That's good advice too. Cause I like the, the, the slow buildup in that, that ramp up for this, because you're right. I mean, if you sat around and you called all the men over in the neighborhood and then immediately you started into some really deep conversations and you put people on the spot that the group's not going to be coming back. That's right. That's right. A lot of what, what I do with fire pit is I show the guys leading the fire pit group how to create a group environment and a conversational environment that encourages connection. That's really the leader's only job. The leader's job is not to teach. It's not even really to bring the topics. I'll write the topics for you. Your job is to keep the pulse of the group. Who's not talking, who needs to be brought into the conversation, who's talking too much and needs to shut up. Who, how do I create this environment and maintain this, maintain this environment where guys can open up and really connect? That is the leader's job. And I find that when I help leaders do that, instead of teaching, you actually get the kind of men's group that every man wants. What are some of the examples you have of people that have really started to connect? with the neighbors and, and people in the, the fire pit group. What what have they been able to express as far as their, I'm not exactly sure how to phrase it, but what's been some of their feedback? The, the feedback, um, it, it's been nothing short of this has changed my life. And I don't think that's such a testament to fire pit, although I appreciate the compliment. I think it's a testament to what it's like to be connected with a bunch of guys. There are guys in fire pit groups in their 40s and 50s and even 60s that are saying, I've never had friendships like this in my whole life. I've never been able to speak so easily about what I actually want to talk about um, with a group of guys before and have them hear me out and have them ask questions. And it is incredibly freeing. Um, it takes a burden off of guys' marriages. There are some guys that are having conversations with their wives they should never have with their wives. You need to have a group of guys that you can talk to. And I remember, this was a couple months ago, one of the guys in a group that I'm leading right now, um, he showed up and he said, I've been sitting on this for 48 hours. I decided I was not going to talk to my wife about this, but I knew I had fire pit. And so I was going to show up and here it is. I'm going to let you have it. And he just talked about something that he was going through. I, I hear that kind of thing a lot. Guys sort of live their life in um, work mode or presentation mode. And when they get around a fire pit, and it probably helps a little bit that, you know, a lot of times guys will bring a beer. It's dark outside. There's a fire. There's not the spotlight on them. I think all those elements help a little bit. But it's the connections that they feel when they realize I can be myself, I can let my guard down, I can say what I want. And uh, I mean, what a shame it is to go 
all the way in your 50s before you found a group of guys you can talk to like that. But I'm I'm glad it I'm glad it finally happened. And so there are guys, um, for the most part, nobody leaves fire pit. You you might move away, um, and so you're not connected with the guys anymore. But no one leaves those connections. That's why these things last for years. I've got a group right now that's been together for twelve years. How would somebody go about starting one of these groups? It it's very easy. There's a a website that I've set up firepitmensgroup.com. And there's actually a free download people can have called how to start a men's group in your neighborhood from scratch. And I literally just walk through, this is how you do it. If you sign up for fire pit, I'm going to give you all of the discussion guides. I think I've got three or four years of material out there right now. And I'm also going to, I'm going to help you take that on ramp with the guys and explain to you, okay, you're not trying to get down and dirty right away. Just, just open up the conversation this way, watch for these things, um, and sort of maintain the health of the environment so guys can talk. The group will take care of the discussion. The The leader doesn't. The leader has to take care of the environment to make sure it's right for the discussion. And I, I explain all of that on the website. So yeah, anybody who wanted to do it, uh, it's not difficult. Guys will show up, you know, you... Anyone listening to this could start a fire pit group with guys in his neighborhood. I guarantee it. Guys want something like this. You just got to be the one to to kick it off. What I like about that, too, is that you, you're starting very, I mean, big guys in the neighborhood. It's not, hey, I've got to find people in the city that I live in, or I've got to find people in the region or the state or, or whatever. It's literally just, hey, Put something up on your neighborhood uh, Facebook group or or whatever that is, and start opening that up and, and inviting people to come over. Yeah, I I like knock on their door. Uh, I'll I'll give you the the sixty second version of what's in this download, but I still hope I still hope any listeners go out there and, and give this free download. Start the biggest fire in your backyard you possibly can without getting the fire department to show up. That's that's step one. And go enjoy it with your family. Roast marshmallows, do whatever you want. When you do that, your neighbors are going to look outside and they're going to notice that there is a huge fire in your backyard. The next day, go knock on their door and say, I just built this fire pit and I'm going to get a few guys on the on the street or in the neighborhood that want to come over once uh, every once in a while and hang out and have conversation. And I thought of you. Would you be interested? The, the very first question the guy's going to ask is, is this religious? Say no. We might have conversations about God or UFOs or politics or how to grow grass. But no, this is not religious. And it, you don't have to worry about that. It's guys sitting around a fire talking. And um, they're going to be flattered that you asked. Maybe they can't make it because of their work schedule, but they're going to go, huh. It's it's being it's being included with no um, no sale no gotcha I don't have to do anything you want me for me Guy, guys show up for that see it's, it's it's easy to do what are some of the next things or or next steps that you have for the fire pit uh, men's group do you have any you know, plan or how do you, how are you expanding? How how are you moving things along? Yeah, well, so one of the things I'm going to start doing is is um, doing some guest podcast spots like this. So thank you, I appreciate it, getting the word out there, and adding to what's on the site so that it's easier for guys um, to get what they need to really get fire pit fi- a fire pit going in their neighborhood. This is not going to revolve around me. There are a lot of men's groups, especially online men's groups, where where the founder of the group says, everybody come listen to me. I am, you know, the guy on the stage. And Fire Pit's not designed like that. There are guys starting Fire Pit groups across the country that I've never met and probably will never meet. I'd love to, but I just, I'll probably never meet them. Fire Pit is their men's group. It's in their neighborhood. They started it. I'm going to give them the tool to do it. But it is their fire pit group. That's the that's the hope, 
is that there's going to be a bunch of fire pit groups that are independently run and I'm giving them the on-ramp and helping them long enough until they are talking about what's going on in their lives. And then it's, it's their group. Oh, that sounds awesome. And what I'd love to do is encourage the, the grandfathers that are listening to this. This is a great opportunity to help, you know, your neighborhood out and help your area out in a great way to share and pass on and even take in knowledge that the other men in your group have. So the grandpas, listen to end on this. And if this is something you're, you're looking at, you know, please check out the uh, fire pit men's group. And, and see if this is something that you can start to adopt in your area. Yeah, thank you. Todd, is there anything about Fire Pit Men's Group that I haven't asked you or that we haven't touched on that you would like to share? I don't think so. I think I, think I just want to reiterate um, one key point. Guys are so interested in looking for ways to connect. It is... The things that are disconnecting men are getting stronger and th- there are more there are more things coming on the horizon that are going to be disconnecting all of us. There's an opportunity to walk out your door and make a difference in other guys' lives. And if you're looking for a way to do something impactful, don't think uh, any more grand than your street. That will trip you very easily. If you try and make a make a difference in your city or your town or anything like that, you're just going to run into a lot of headache. If you think about what can I do for the guys on my street, what opportunities can I create for them to connect? Um, they will take you up on it and you will make a significant difference in their lives. If you were to do something for your town, they're going to have you stand up at a parade and give you a fake gold key and say, Hey, congratulations. If you have guys over into your backyard and offer yourself as a friend to them and let them talk, they will look you in the face and say, you changed my life. And so I would say if you're if you're looking for something, a way to do something meaningful at this point in your life, there are so many guys who want to connect, do something that allows them to connect. And uh, you are going to feel that sense of meaning and purpose um, when you get together with the guys like that. That's awesome. And folks, I really hope you take Todd up on this invitation to start a fire pit group wherever you live and to to build those connections because whether you're a a younger man with a young family or you're a seasoned grandfather, we've all got needs to connect and we've all got needs to, to share our talents and what we have learned over the years with the other people in our neighborhood. So uh, Todd, thank you so much for being on the cool grandpa podcast. I really do enjoy this. And again, the uh, website is firepitmensgroup.com. Is there any place else that you want folks to go? I, I would say just the website. I've got some social media stuff, but I'd say if they go to the website, start with that download. Um, that's the best way to get a sense of, Uh, what you do next and how easy it really is. Well, thanks again, Todd, for being on the Cool Grandpa Podcast. I really have enjoyed this conversation with you. All right. Thanks a lot, Greg. It was fun. Boy, I appreciated Todd being on the show. It was great to talk to him about this important topic of friendship amongst men and how sometimes we can be challenged as people move away, you stop a job, you start a new job. And now, too, with everybody working remotely, it seems, you lose a lot of those buddies that you end up having around the office. So it's important for guys to stay connected, to have a group of guys to hang out with, share just what's going on in their lives, and be there to support each other. So after you've listened to this conversation, do me a favor, please share it with three friends who would enjoy listening to Todd and Todd talking about Fire Pit Men's Group. Remember, you can find more information at firepitmensgroup.com and you can see just really how easy of a program Todd has laid out and developed. So until next time, remember to stay cool. 
Thank you for listening to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do me a favor and share it with a friend. That's the best way you can help us to expand our community, as well as get the news out about how valuable grandpas are in the lives of those kids. If you'd like to leave me a comment or shoot me a potential topic for this uh, podcast, please go to www.cool-grandpa.us. Look for the comments tab, fill it up, hit submit. It's as easy as that. Until next time, remember to stay cool.